he sent for Jehoshaphat. Now, he knew how weak he was. He knew he was, were not capable of doing the job. You see, when you lose your anointing, you become as ordinary people. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Son. He knew that he had lost his anointing. <laughs> so he needed help. So he sent for somebody that had the anointing of God upon them, Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah. And he asked him, which way should we go? <laughs> and he said, by the way, of the wilderness. Huh? Now there they were. They was on their way. Gotta fight. Have you ever been confronted with something that was so important huh, that you were really to fight? I don't mean fish fight huh, because we are not fighting against flesh and blood but against principality and high places. Huh? You can't fight this fight uh, with your dukes uh, or with your mouth uh, but you got to rely on the spirit uh, that same spirit uh, that spoke the world into existence if that spirit uh, is in you uh, you can cast out devils uh, you can lay hands on the sick uh, they shall recover lift your hands uh, and tell God thank you You ever wanted, you ever wanted something bad enough that you're willing to fight, you stand still. The Bible said, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abiding in the work of the Lord. For as you know that your work is not in vain, huh? you got to be willing to stand fast. How many of you have made that commitment? When the devil comes, I shall not be moved. I'll be like that tree planted by the river of Jordan. I shall not be moved. Why don't you lift your hands and tell the Lord thank you. When your enemy comes in like a flood, the Bible said, the Spirit of the Lord, will lift up a standard uh, against him. Uh, I don't have to fight my battle. Uh, I can be still uh, and see the salvation uh, of the Lord. Uh, shout glory. Now, here we have these three kings who's going to battle. Gotta fight. The enemy's waiting for you the king of Israel, the king of Judah, and the king of Edom. There they were in the wilderness. And then they realized that there was no water. You've gone three days into the wilderness, and there was no water. You say, what happened? Can I teach this lesson? Sometimes God will allow you to get so say, what's wrong with Zion is folks have one foot in the church and one foot out of the church. If things don't go well, I'll just step out. But there'll come a time when the Lord will allow you to get so far out there that you can't step out. That you're going to have to believe God for something. Do I have any believers in here? Have you been to confronted with a situation that you knew you couldn't fight yourself, that you have to hold it, believe in God. Uh, you have to sell out to God. Uh, say, come what may. Uh, I'm not going to move from this thing. Uh, if you believe God when everything was going well, uh, you should be able to believe in when things are not. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, you should be like Job. Uh, 
Though he slay me, uh, yet will I trust him. I'll wait until my change come. Uh, you sometimes have to cry. Uh, weeping may endure for a night, uh, but joy comes in the morning. Uh, tell your neighbor, uh, say your morning time uh, is just around the corner. Uh, don't give up now. Uh, it's too late now. Uh, you got to go all the way. Uh, I promised the Lord uh, that I would hold out uh, and see what the end gonna be. Uh, shout glory! Now, you will always have doubters in your midst. I don't care what you start. You're going to always have doubters, doubters. But what if? What if? And most of the time I tell people, I said, don't bring that to me. Don't bring that to me. If you don't have no faith, then get no faith. And I'll teach you how to receive faith. And uh, I'm glad you asked. How do you receive it? Well, faith come by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So when, I, when you read your Bible, don't read it in silence. You got to read it so you can hear what you read. And then you got to step out on what you said, on what the word said. If the Bible said you can, don't allow the devil to entertain that thought and put it in your mind that you can't. Now, doubt is a killer of faith. So all doubters, I don't want to have a conversation with you. I want to have folks that believe that God can and that he can do anything but fail, that there is no, 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 nothing uh, too hard for the Lord. Uh, if God could step out on nothing uh, and speak the world into existence, uh, God can do anything but fail. Uh, if God can just reach down uh, and get a few grains of soil uh, of dust uh, and form man and allow the Holy Ghost uh, to breathe into his nostrils uh, and he become a living soul, uh, you you can't make me doubt him. I know too much about him. I know where God has brought me from. When I was down and out, couldn't see my way back against the wall. God stepped in right on time. Do I have a witness out there? Jump on your feet and tell somebody. Say, God will make a way out of no way. Say, God can bring you out. Listen to this. No water. Sit down. No water. You can be at the right place at the right time. I want everybody to get this. And yet things will happen. That's not an indication that you should leave. Most of the time, especially church folks, when they're in a church and seem like nothing is happening, they feel like that God is telling them to leave. Well, wherever you go, there are going to be some times when you're going to feel like there is nothing happening. Do you ever look at yourself when I don't see people joining the church, get saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, I don't blame the church. I look at Hesse in the mirror and say, Lord, what am I doing? Uh, because you said in your word, we, you add to the church daily such as should be saved. So it's something that I might be doing. God, I want you to reveal to me if there is any hindrances uh, in my life. Uh, I want you to take it out. 
don't start parting fingers, uh, but look at yourself uh, and say, fix me, Lord. At the right place, at the right time, in the wilderness, and no water. What you going to do when you're in the backside of a desert going to war and you find out that there is no water? Uh, thank you, thank you, Lord. Uh, now listen, uh, San Ballot, uh, you know San Ballot uh, and Tobiah. Uh, now that, that spirit had got into one of the kings. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, now the king of Israel, you know what he said? He was negative in the first place uh, because he had lost his anointed. Uh, don't you come approaching me uh, and you done lost your anointed. Uh, you should go back and get it. Uh, tell somebody said I had it, uh, but I lost it. Uh, but I won't rest uh, until I get it back. Uh, how bad do you want it? Uh, you got to fast and pray uh, and seek the Lord every day. Uh, Lord, uh, I want my anointing back. Uh, it might cost you something, uh, but you can get it back. Uh, come on, put your hands together uh, and said, I want my anointing. <laughs>